Hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to give it a couple more minutes because we have a very large group uh, for today, and a bunch of them are still logging in. Give it another minute. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope your uh, hope everyone's day is going well. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us for today's webinar. Today's presentation will be reviewing the new features of Sage EM version 12. But before we get started, I'd like to mention that last year we did a um, <clears throat> sorry we conducted uh, webinars on new features that were added to version 10 and 11 uh, for Sage EM. If you would like to receive a, a link for those recordings. Uh, just simply send me an email and I will go ahead and send the link out to you. So let's get started. Uh, real quick, a short little agenda, but there's no PowerPoint for it. Uh, today's agenda, agenda is qu quite simple and straightforward. We'll have an introduction of the presenters, a bit about net at work, and a demo then on Stage EM version 12 along with the Q&A session. Next slide. So most of you know who I am, uh, but just in case, my name is Tom Beaterly, and I'm a senior account executive here at Net of Work for our Stage EM and Stage 500 clients. I've been with Net of Work now for 14 years and with the Sage products for the past 23 years. On the call with me today is Bob Combs, who is a field service, I'm sorry, field sales engineer with Sage, who will actually be conducting the presentation today. Okay, a few house cleaning items. Everyone's phone will be muted during the presentation. If you have any questions during or at the end of the webinar during the Q&A session, please use the question panel in the upper right-hand corner. I'll either answer your questions within the panel or during the Q&A session. If you prefer to ask your question in person, uh, raise, your, sorry, raise your hand via the panel, at which point I will unmute your phone or so you can ask your question. Additionally, we are recording today's webinar. You will receive a follow-up email, which includes the link for the recording, along with the today's PowerPoint and information on version 12. Feel free to forward the information to others at your company. Over the past 22 years, Net of Work has grown into many different areas to provide new tools to help uh, in areas outside your ERP solution or system. Sorry. As you can see within the PowerPoint that Net of Work can provide uh, help in many different areas of your organization, which might include document management, CRM, business process review, to name a few. Today, I like to review hosting, or by another name, private cloud option that is an option from Net at Work. Over the years, many of our clients have asked about options for removing the need of supporting of hardware on their at their location, along with all that it entails to support that. Network offers the ability to allow our customers to move not only their ERP, but their other applications to a private cloud, allowing you to remove the need to worry about daily backups, security updates from Microsoft, uh, easier scalability as your company grows, and with an uptime, uh, uptown, uptime of 99.9%. Uh, now, <clears throat> it also removes the headaches and uh, opens resources within your IT department, along with redundancy to protect your data and operations. Next month, we'll be having a webinar on April 17th, where we'll be reviewing the Net at Work cloud hosting options. I hope you're able to join. Next one. So people have been asking about this. So Stage has announced a Stage Summit for Enterprise Management System. It will be only for Stage EM, otherwise known as Stage X3. It's going to be on September 4th and 5th of uh, 2009 in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, open registration will start in May. Uh, so it will be breakout sessions similar to the other Sage summits that you may have attended in the past, but it will only concentrate on the EM uh, product line. 
Uh, of course, Net of Work will have people there, um, and I hope you're able to uh, join us uh, at the summit. If you have any questions or you would like to know about some of the promos that we'll be having in reference to the registration, uh, again, feel free to email me, and then we can follow up with that. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead and bring it over to Bob for the presentation of the EM product version 12. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, great. I, I appreciate that, Tom, and hopefully everybody can hear me fine. Um, uh, my name again is Bob Combs. I've uh, been in the ERP uh, industry and space for at least 25 years, uh, more years than I want to uh, to tell you about. But uh, as Tom says, we're going to look at um, uh, enterprise management and version 12. The exact version that we're going to be looking at today is version 12.0.15 or patch 15 for uh, version 12. Uh, and some of the highlights and benefits, and there's a lot of them, so I'll get right to it here. So we work well uh, as far as um, we, we provide, and I know that we have some, according to Tom, some people that uh, are on Sage 500 or the 500 platform with us today, and I, and I wanted to do a pretty good introduction of the enterprise management solution in general. Um, but as an overview, we provide financial management, full supply chain management, production management, and project management. And as we drill down into each one of those areas, of course, budgeting and accounting, full fixed assets and financial dashboards, uh, purchasing and inventory control, and also warehousing is built in. Uh, sales and customer service, uh, anything having to do with bills of material and product, uh, production planning, because we do have a built-in uh, uh, production scheduler in the product itself, uh, shop floor control, quality control, non-conformance has been added uh, into version 12, and we're going to talk about uh, more about that, uh, those enhancements here in a minute, but uh, also big big project management uh, improvements, uh, such as work breakdown structures, being able to drill down into those work breakdown structures, getting financial snapshots, getting financial overviews, and, and so on as far as project management is concerned. Uh, we extensively use Amazon Web Services for our hosting, uh, and Net at Work does a tremendous job uh, hosting hosting platforms, as Tom was showing you before. As mobile, uh, we support Apple or iOS devices, Android devices, and of course, uh, Windows 10 is supported inside of the product itself. These are some of the verticals that we uh, operate nicely in, the discrete manufacturing, process manufacturing, and, and distribution. Along with that, uh, very, very good in food and beverage uh, and FDA compliance, pharma compliance, having to do with anything having to do with distribution, wholesale trade or engineering services, as well as discrete manufacturing, uh, industrial equipment and electrical uh, electronics of any type. Um, as part of version 12, we do offer uh, new cloud offerings and services. We, um, we have not only single tenant, but multi-tenant uh, solutions uh, as far as enterprise management is concerned. Uh, and some of the other areas that have been improved uh, down there as far as uh, non-conformance revision management, uh, weight, weight scale improvements, uh, tax uh, declaration framework, um, We've just introduced uh, the first part of license plate management, and I'll be explaining license plate and showing that uh, to you uh, here in the demo, uh, and also revision management and, and uh, various enhancements over on the production scheduler side. So uh, what's, what's new uh, as far as user experiences are concerned? What we've tried to do inside of version 12 is introduce a new user experience, a new framework uh, that is much easier to navigate, 
and then a much more responsive design as far as a layout. You can you can actually customize and or configure the screens to fit on laptops, desktops, uh, mobile devices, any type of mobile device, whether or not it's a uh, handheld phone or a uh, iPad, any size of uh, iPad and or tablet device uh, over on the Android side. And you have a complete complete designer function at your fingertips inside of the product for any of the screens because of the fact that version 12 and EM are completely cloud uh, based. So along with that uh, user experience, like I said, you can access dashboards, uh, you can streamline workflow uh, you can manage uh, any areas such as manufacturing, inventory, and sales, and customer service, and or finance. As I've also said, uh, you can also do inquiries right from any iOS device, uh, Windows, and or uh, Android devices themselves, uh, and be able to access data anywhere, at any place, at any time, providing you uh, the capability of uh, of looking uh, through throughout the solution and dealing with issues as they come up and or uh, just uh, interacting with the system anywhere where you are. As far as financial management, there's been huge improvements uh, in the solution as far as version 12 is concerned. Some of those are having to do with electronic signature for both sales in uh, sales invoices and journal entry. Um, ba basically what this does uh, is it provides encrypted and or hashed uh, highly secure algorithms uh, based on uh, various signature types that, that are very, very hard uh, to change uh, and gives you as companies uh, the ability to easy, easily detect changes, uh, whether or not those changes are occurring outside of the system or directly on the on the um, uh, various screens themselves. So there's a there's there's very very strong capability over on the electronic signature side. Uh, also, uh, advanced bank uh, statement imports. It provides the capabilities for automatically loading bank statements and importing new bank statements formats. Um, MT940 is included as well as CM, uh, CAMT uh, as far as, uh, and also uh, provides the capability of doing bank reconciliations very, very quickly. Uh, standard, uh, importing, matching, generating payments, and having uh, that full bank statement at your fingertips uh, after the import, uh, I know is very, very important to you. Um, another uh, great uh, improvement is enhanced journal traceability, uh, giving you the capability of having uh, that uh, looking at uh, journal entries, being able to trace uh, how, in fact, that journal entry was entered, whether or not it was entered manually or automatically or imported, uh, and what source uh, that particular uh, journal entry came from. So there's full traceability that has been added uh, in the product itself. Um, another very, very good improvement over on the financial uh, side is uh, the FIFO rate conversion um, uh, utility that actually provides the capability of monitoring uh, petty cash transactions using first in, first out, doing a calculation, allowing you as users to uh, review the variances and then uh, process uh, the variance and also post them automatically within the system. So that's just some of the, the various financial management improvements that you have inside of the system. Um, 
Also, over on the financial management side, uh, you do have uh, the capability of uh, looking at revenue recognition. Uh, new revenue recognition standards uh, have been introduced both for public and private businesses uh, with the ability to go ahead and calculate those, those uh, entries uh, inside of the system itself and review them against complex projects and or uh, a various percentage uh, entries that are across the, uh, the application. Now, as far as supply chain is concerned, uh, sales and procurement uh, has certainly been improved. Uh, having, having default suppliers per product sites, uh, not having uh, invoiceable uh, deliveries, and project dimension automatic updates on the sales and purchasing documents also having to do with scheduling invoice uh, generation inside of the product itself uh, as i've already mentioned license plating uh, has been introduced in version 12 uh, grouping inventory by container, whatever that container is, whether or not it's a pallet, a bag, uh, uh, a container itself, uh, a, uh, a truckload, whatever you would want to identify as a license plate and or stock quantities can be identified identified inside of the system. It's almost like having a, a bill of lading and or a, uh, a listing of everything that is on a pallet and identifying that with one entry and or one barcode, which uh, label printing is certainly available as far as the license plating um, uh, application is concerned. We also have improved and added uh, the XML generation for EDI or electronic uh, data interchange uh, and e-invoicing uh, as far as having compliance, uh, compliancy with uh, sales invoicing. Some other areas as far as uh, improvement are concerned, manufacturing management, uh, we've added non-conformant management for those quality-minded individuals out there. Uh, it's very uh, uh, well suited for ISO uh, compliant organization and or any other quality certification. Uh, looking at root causes, having uh, the capability of going in and uh, actually recording a nonconformance, looking at causes, and then uh, closing, being able to take action against that particular nonconformance before closing. Um, production management uh, has also been improved as far as mass replacement and deletion on versioning. Uh, do, doing revisions and critical changes, doing adds and updates and removes in version control documents and or uh, having the capability of changing uh, bills of materials and or routing uh, flows after in fact uh, a work order has been released in the system itself. Um, uh, and also, of course, weighing scaled improvements for the pharmaceutical um, compliances and or those that have to be have those compliances out there in the industry. Um, as I've said, there, there have been production scheduler uh, enhancements uh, inside of the system, improvements in planning and visibility across the, the organization and providing that visibility. Uh, in a Gantt chart form, uh, being able to highlight uh, what work orders uh, need uh, attention and also having the capability of having raw material availability or first raw material availability inside of the system and having that uh, right at your fingertips at any given time. Um, again, what I said, 
that is raw material availability, uh, linking between work orders. So those interdependencies and or having the a dependent work order linked uh, across the, the Gantt chart and or the solution itself and being able to see that planning view and new criteria um, uh, inside of the product and uh, fixing the operation start date. So a lot of improvements there. Under the project management side or PJM enhancements uh, focused on the financial control and budget management, you can take uh, uh, a look at the project management screen and automatically have a financial situation at your fingertips uh, and, and be able to color code that uh, financial situation any which way you would want to color code it so that therefore you see what needs action and uh, what uh, what alerts and or uh, automation that you need to apply. Um, along with this, you have the capability of doing financial tracking, multi-project consolidation uh, in a financial overview, uh, taking financial snapshots and doing comparisons uh, against those financial snapshots as in fact time moves on doing global tree views and task and budget assignments for project, doing project planning, uh, task dependency and task operation uh, dependencies across the solution itself, uh, project baseline snapshots, uh, graphical timelines uh, within those uh, task planning and being able to explode those uh, uh, graph graphical uh, timelines uh, inside of the product. And then of course, uh, monitoring those key performance indicators inside of the product, uh, having to do with sales margin analysis, budgets, and also commitments um, inside of uh, EM. So I'm gonna uh, jump out of the PowerPoint. Didn't wanna bore you to death with PowerPoint too long there. Uh, and jump into the solution so that we can uh, we can um, see uh, see some of those uh, improvements that I was talking about. Just give my virtual machine a minute here. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is um, uh, bring you into the virtual environment that I have set up uh, today. Uh, before I do that, uh, I wanted to make sure that you knew, know that uh, the solution is certainly browser agnostic. Uh, you can utilize uh, whether or not uh, you're utilizing uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, uh, you can also utilize Opera. Uh, I have all three of those browsers uh, loaded uh, uh, on this particular virtual machine uh, that I'm using today. Uh, today, what I'm going to be using is the Internet Explorer um, browser. And all I'm going to do is sign on uh, to the EM product. Uh, it's a typical screen that you would have on any cloud-based uh, uh, Sage product uh, that you've used possibly in the past. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. And what that's going to do is it's gonna bring me to my landing page or Bob's landing page, which uh, ha you have a visual process flow inside of the product that you can interact with uh, uh, each step of the way. This particular flow that you're seeing on the screen is just the distribution flow. Uh, but what we've added here uh, inside of version 12 is various, various uh, key things uh, as far as moving around on the screen and the, the user interface is very, very interactive. Um, what I what I have here is I can I can hit the home button 
or the Sage logo in this particular case, and or you, you have the capability of changing it to your logo, and it will bring me back and display the home page anywhere where I am in the solution itself. What we have also added is we've added a uh, reference date uh, field so that you can go ahead and apply the date that uh, you want to base the data off of inside of the product and then uh, of course hit OK. Uh, it does have a calendar function out there with it so therefore you can uh, uh, select uh, uh, the date by the calendar function and or uh, plug it in yourself if in fact you want a particular date uh, and type over that date. You also have the capability of going in and looking at your profile from uh, this blue ribbon bar across the top. Um, you can see your full pro profile as a user. So therefore, if in fact you have access and or rights in order to do it, you can change uh, various things as far as your information, your email information, your photo, uh, anything having to do with administration, what uh, what applications uh, that you have the rights and roles uh, in order to see. And then uh, it basically provides a capability of uh, going in and seeing any of uh, the various uh, user roles that you do have and what uh, sub roles you have inside of the products or what groups you fall into and or what teams you fall into. So in this particular area, you have you would have the capability of seeing not only roles, but groups, endpoints, and also teams that you belong to uh, inside of the inside of the application itself. You also have the capability under this particular uh, screen uh, to change language on the fly for you as a user. Uh, so therefore, uh, if in fact I wanted to change uh, my particular language to Spanish, basically what I would do is I would just click Spanish and it would change it across uh, the entire application for you as that particular user. So therefore, you can see all of the all of the header. Of course, it does does not change the the uh, underlying SQL data that you have inside of the uh, SQL tables themselves, but it does uh, change uh, the table fields, anything that is applied to those table fields as or and or selection inside of those table fields and so on down the line. So there's a, there's a wide, wide variety of ways that you can change languages inside of the application itself. Since I don't speak Spanish, I'm gonna change it back to English, uh, US English. And uh, that can be done again uh, at a at just a flip of a flip of a switch or a touch of a mouse. Also, as far as uh, the solution is concerned, if this por portion of the solution is concerned, you can also adjust uh, display uh, type so that therefore, if in fact you uh, are on a larger screen or you're projecting something on the screen. You can adjust contrast, okay, in order to adjust themes uh, back and forth, uh, adjusting the uh, the automation of the screen itself. So uh, again, there's a there's a variety of ways in doing that too. We've a, we've added a selection, and let me uh, pop back out of this and go just show you that I can go back to my home screen. Um, we also have added a selection of what roles that this particular uh, role has access to, uh, providing the capability of seeing the role details and drilling down on those role, uh, role details as far as into the security uh, profiles inside of the application. So there's a, a wide variety of ways in getting to information very, very quickly. 
Okay, so in this particular case, it tells what you uh, have the capability of creating, reading, writing, deleting, and also executing as an administrator in this particular case. You also have the selection of jumping from one uh, system type to another and or one flow to another uh, on the blue ribbon bar. You also have the capability of going to online help and the online uh, help center inside of the product itself. So from that from that menu, you can jump from place to place very, very quickly and also get online help very, very quickly um, uh, on, that, on that particular bar. Um, you also have the capability of going in and setting up favorites and showing and managing what we call bookmarks inside of the system. So you can jump from place to place to place very, very quickly. So for example, if I jump in to just hit my favorite on orders, it will take me to a selection of screens that I've set up. And over here on the full entry screen for orders, I would then be taken automatically to sales orders in this particular case and be able to drill into those sales orders. As part of other uh, improvements, uh, as far as a user interface is concerned, what we've also done is we've added four arrows up here to take you to, to help you uh, with um, navigating the left bar uh, and or where all your data is actually showing up being able to drag that left bar over and or uh, dragging it dragging it back inside of the system itself uh, so again uh, first record uh, previous record next record and also last record can, can be obtained very very quickly uh, inside of the application also, what we have added is we've added a complete open site map, okay, and or site map inside of the system itself, allowing you over on the left-hand side of the site map to go in and drill out to any areas that you would want to. So let's say that I wanted to go directly to manufacturing and being able to collapse and or expand uh, uh, each section and or collapse only one section, you can do that inside of the site map. So it's a, just an easier way of navigating for beginners and or even a, uh, a more advanced user uh, inside of the system itself. Being able to search the site map for whatever I want to search for. Uh, let's say that I wanted to search for export. In this particular case, it brings up 20 of those exports and, and highlights those inside of the site map itself. Now, one other thing that you can do, or a couple of other things that you can do inside of this site map are to add a particular entry on the site map as a favorite. And all you would have to do, or a what we call again bookmarks. Uh, inside of the system and all you would have to do is uh, with one click of the mouse that that particular entry would be added as a favorite if I wanted to remove it from my favorites all I would have to do is go over a, and into my favorites and remove it or I could click it again and it would remove remove that particular favorite from my uh, from my bookmarks um, also, you do have a search, the search capability or go-to function inside of the product. So therefore, you can search for anything that you would want to search for uh, inside of the product itself. And, um, and uh, it would take you automatically to that particular search uh, uh, capability. Okay. So to close down the sitemap, all I would have to do is hit X here. 
And uh, now I wanted to show you some of the capability for modifying and or customizing screens. Uh, I don't want to uh, dwell on this long, but basically any screen can be configured and or customized to be shown on a mobile device or any iPad or uh, tablet device or uh, Android device or whatever you want to show it on. So let's say that I wanted to customize this particular order entry screen. Basically what I could do here is I could go and either one uh, hide fields, I could uh, uh, in enlarge fields, I could columnize fields. So therefore, if in fact I wanted this, this particular um, block and or uh, function within the order entry field or screen to show up in columns, basically all I would have to do is turn uh, turn the columns on. And basically, it columnizes uh, the various uh, the various fields inside of those uh, that particular screen. So, again, uh, there's a wide variety of ways in order to configure screens in order to meet your needs inside of the product. You can also turn screen entries and also um, a cell phone uh, capability on and off on the various fields. So if you did not want to uh, show this particular field of this particular screen uh, inside of the product uh, on a cell phone or a tablet device, you can, you can actually uh, turn that particular uh, field off on the device itself. Okay, so let's pop back over. And let me go back to my home screen here. And then what I what I want to show you next is some of the distribution improvements, uh, license plating, uh, for example. Um, you can either get to it from a, a process flow, or I have bookmarked uh, license plating in uh, this particular case on my bookmarks. And I'm just going to go into license plate uh, creation. And let me expand that particular screen. And basically, what you can do is you can uh, uh, tell uh, the system uh, as far as the introduction to license plating. Uh, what stock site uh, and drill out to select uh, a particular stock site, uh, go out and select a particular container or uh, number a container, what the container type is, whether or not it's a bag, a pallet, a container itself. Uh, you can identify a license plate sequence number. You can make this license plate active or inactive. You can also go out and do things like identifying whether or not it's a single uh, uh, product uh, that pertains to that license plate or a single item that pertains to that license plate. A single lot can also be identified what location that particular license plated item is in and then be able to identify a number for that uh, lo inside of that location itself. You can also do things like printing uh, and identify a particular label format and or drill out for a particular uh, uh, label format, which there are multiple types uh, that have been identified inside of uh, uh, my system here. Uh, and then of course, what destination or printer that particular uh, label would be printed to. As far as going in and uh, going in and doing uh, license plate uh, assignments, 
You can also uh, uh, do things like uh, having descriptions, making sure that you associate uh, that particular location of that license plate to a uh, particular location or to a uh, on a particular product that is loaded to that license plate itself. What major version and or lot that is associated with that particular license plate number. Uh, where in fact the destination of that license plate is going and what is contained as far as stock lines and being able to add stock lines to that particular license plate and or product that is being loaded to any container, to any pallet, and then having one particular barcode label uh, to identify that license plate itself. So there's a wide variety of using this particular enhancement uh, in the solution itself. Now, uh, there, there is also a way of doing stock changes uh, on LPNs and uh, license plate numbers inside of the product. So therefore, you can move actual product from one license plate to another and or one container to another uh, by just doing a selection on the warehouse, the location type, the location, and then uh, having the license plate number uh, uh, at your fingertips, the associated container at your fingertips, and then uh, uh, identifying uh, the product and or the light of the lot uh, that is inside of the uh, uh, the actual container and or contained in the license plate number uh, so that therefore you can move and or change stock from one location or one license plate to another. So uh, uh, you don't have the you don't only have the capability of establishing, multiple product uh, on pallets or containers, but you can move them any which way you want to uh, uh, on a yard, for example, on a in a warehouse or uh, within multiple warehouse locations uh, within the system itself. So again, a very, very strong application inside of the product itself. So um, doing purchasing and or doing uh, purchases uh, inside of the product for services has also been improved. You can do um, um, a line items for services without having uh, to designate those services and or subcontract those services on a purchase order itself. So let me just jump into purchasing. I'm going to go to suppliers in this particular uh, process flow. And basically what that's going to do is it's gonna bring up my purchase order form. And I'm just gonna go to lines here on the purchase order form itself. And I'm gonna designate a service item that I've set up inside of the, inside of the product itself. Um, that uh, service item is S SER 13. And let me, I think it's 013. Just give me a second here. Yes, it's SER 013. And I'm just going to say OK here. And basically what that does is it brings up a product type that's been added to the, the purchasing screen. And you can designate this as far as product is concerned uh, as standard subcontract and or in this particular case, services. So um, what this allows 
allows you to do is it allows you to go ahead and contract for services inside of the purchasing module without having to designate a subcontract inside of the application itself. So that will shortcut and or abbreviate the, the, uh, the application and also uh, the uh, capability of doing subcontracting inside of the application itself. I'm just going to hit cancel there because I did want to show you that we did add the, the product type screen inside of the application. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, show you uh, another distribution improvement uh, where, in fact, we've gone ahead and added import and export templates for uh, the capability of going in and importing projects inside of. The, the CRM embedded application inside of the Bob, product just, itself. Bob, just to let you know, we're down to the last 10 minutes for the uh, demo area, the demo component of the, uh, the webinar. Oh, okay. Time. Okay, I'm being, uh, I'm being too, um, too talkative here, I guess. So. Um, so what this allows you to do is it allows you to not only define the capability of the, the general uh, import but and or export, but to designate whether or not it will be an export import, whether or not updates are allowed, to identify fields as far as identifiers inside of the product and also fields inside of the product that in fact you want to import and or export from as far as projects are concerned. So that saves a lot of time uh, inside of the product, whether or not you're copying, importing, and or exporting CRM type information for projects um, uh, into the system itself. Uh, and, it's, and it is a true time saver inside of the version 12 product. Um, Quickly, uh, since we're, we are running out of time here, I wanted to show you orders and um, the availability uh, or the material availability that's available on the customer or sales order screens. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go to lines underneath uh, a product itself and or a sales order. And let me go to one that has... Well, let me let me just use that one in the in the for the sake of time here. Basically, uh, we've added the capability uh, for when your customer services people are going ahead and entering quantities and or uh, orders inside of a customer uh, or quantities inside of a customer order in order to see what stock is available under the available stock line. So therefore, under this particular uh, field, you would have the capability of seeing that you do have 780 pounds in a particular location, and those 780 pounds are available in order to sell to this particular um, uh, person and or this particular site. Now also, which is uh, what's been added, is also the allocated quantity is also uh, going to be shown underneath this particular available stock field also. So therefore, you in this particular case, for this particular part number, you have a remaining qu quantity to allocate of uh, zero, okay, and or the stock available in that particular case is 780 uh, pounds in this particular location. So when in fact your customer service people are going ahead and loading those uh, uh, sales orders, uh, this is very, very helpful or a very, very helpful function for them. And this can be, again, moved around on any device that you would want to uh, uh, move this particular field and or group of fields around 
accounts so that they could have it at their fingertips at any particular time when in fact they're going ahead and entering orders. Um, quickly, I wanted to show you uh, the capability. Bob, real, Bob, real quick, um, a lot of people are asking about the non-conformance capabilities. Yes, okay, and that was what I wanted to, uh, wanted to show, right. you the, show you next, okay. So I can get to that multiple ways. Uh, either one, I could have applied non-conformance and also um, as a favorite, uh, using, utilizing my site map. What I have here is I have a non-conformance management um, workflow uh, and or process uh, flow inside of the product itself. Basically, what I can do is I can create a non-conformance inside of the product. And uh, it's very, very strong. You can go ahead and apply various things like statuses uh, on as you identify uh, the non-conformance. Uh, the system will automatically assign a non-conformance number. Uh, you can designate the site. You can describe the nonconformance. Uh, you can uh, uh, going ahead and filter those by new or in review or in planning or being implemented and so on down the line. You can also apply documents and or images on the screen uh, so that in this particular case, it was a it was a cracked um, uh, uh, I I uh, I phone watch or a, a watch itself or um, uh, Apple Watch uh, inside of the application. You can select the files and be very, very selective on the files and then be able to remove those particular pictures if in fact you have the roles and rights in order to do it. You can identify probable causes. In this particular case, it's a code uh, for um, handling the, a handling issue. Uh, and then uh, uh, supply narrative uh, um, and or typed uh, uh, various entries inside of the product. You can also do source documentation, what document, what document number, what line number, uh, and then go ahead and identify that. Uh, you can go ahead and review the cause uh, for that particular um, uh, non-conformance, uh, going ahead and applying that cause and then applying a reason and then being able to drill out and uh, being able to do a narrative on that cause too. And then having and designating approvers for closing a non-conformance and or whether or not you're going to reject uh, something and the closure for that nonconformance inside of the product. So again, a, a tremendous amount of functionality has been added for nonconformance and nonconformance plans inside of the application. So uh, as far as an action plan uh, can also be added, uh, so if in fact I uh, come out here and uh, let's just go to action plans just so that I can show you this. So basically uh, you, you can have global action plans, you could have specific action plans against uh, various non-conformances. But this uh, is an area where, in fact, you put an action plan in place, uh, giving uh, the capability of, uh, of whether or not purchasing needs to get involved, a supplier needs to get involved, uh, uh, in, in internal departments, other internal departments need to get involved in uh, just, uh, just mapping out a plan and then documenting that plan uh, as part of the process itself. So that's a, that's a bit about nonconformances too. Um, let me show you one other thing quickly, and I know that we're running over on time, but there's just so much, so much to show you all. Uh, let me show you uh, project management very, very quickly.
And what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm just going to jump into uh, jump into a project from the the process flow itself. And in this particular area, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to and, and this is one other area that it has been improved here is uh, the right action bar and or uh, being able to unpin and ha actually have a, a floating action bar over on the right hand side uh, of the product itself. Uh, this is where in fact you have the capability of seeing inside of project management your financial situation. Uh, this has been added uh, so that therefore you have a snapshot you can go ahead and apply financial snapshots inside of the product and or uh, going ahead and either one creating a, a new financial snapshot inside of the product and or being able to compare those financial snapshots. You can do extractions of that uh, uh, financial stra uh, snapshot and or other snapshots that uh, you have the capability of doing, okay? So you can do comparisons, you can do project snapshots, you can do financial snapshots, and also you can do financial overviews inside of, uh, inside of project management also. So in this particular case, it brings up a cost structure and also a cost type, uh, and then being able to expand uh, in order to drill down inside of the financial type so that therefore you know exactly what you're uh, what you're dealing with on a project itself okay okay bob i need to cut you off sorry about that okay. uh just to let know everybody we will answer all the questions so even though we go past the uh three o'clock uh ending time uh we'll be asking answering questions as, or as best as we can so We've got a bunch of questions. If you have any questions now, uh, please type it in to the chat um, chat area on the right in the upper right corner, or raise your hand if you'd like to ask your question uh, directly. So we're going to start with a few here. Um, let's see. What is the um, column on the right side? Uh, button. I'm sorry. What are the buttons on the right side? Uh, where underneath the X, the plus, and stuff. Oh, like okay. That. Okay. Yes, these have uh, these were at, uh, added and moved to the right hand side, and I probably should have explained that too. But there was so, so much to to get to. Uh, these were formerly over uh, along the bottom of the screen in in other versions. This is your close, your new, uh, your save, uh, your create, uh, your delete, and also update print attachments, adding attachments, uh, comments, and also the export functionality. So, okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're going to, there's a question here about an integration to outside system, whether the tools are there. Um, if anyone, there's a couple questions on that. If people would just uh, email me and we can do that as a follow-up because it really can get very technical and I don't want to get into any real technical on this presentation. Uh, another question is reference to hardware requirements. Um, I will send out the, um, uh, in an email, you'll receive the um, detailed feature list of, uh, of the uh, new feature list, but I'll also attach the hardware requirements so that you have that information. Uh, let's see here. Uh, will version 12 allow to make legacy product records versions manage? Uh, we've been using a system for so long that I don't see us recreating all of our products uh, for version management. Uh, Allison, is that within manufacturing or just in general the, um, uh, the um, software itself? Um, let's see, modifications. So um, if the modifications were done on older versions, based upon you may not bring those modifications because they may no longer be necessary, but those modifications can move from uh, your current version. Um, anything definitely above seven is uh, a, a quick, not a straightforward process, but a, a fairly st streamlined process. If you happen to be on version 6.5 because of the difference in technology, that might take a little bit more time in reference to moving those up there. 
Uh, does the non-conformance management connect to the project module, uh, project management module, where it can be found as a root cause of non-conformant management issue that we require our larger projects? Uh, it, I'm looking for a full history. Okay, it does. Uh, so therefore, uh, we can I can either show that or we can get you some information on it. So if you want to email me there, Tom, I can I can get you some more information on that. So okay, all right, Allison, I'll follow up on that with you. Um, let's see, no name product features of version management. So uh, the question about version management was uh, product feature version management. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Um, Allison, um, let's give me, um, send me an email um, and I'll follow up with you directly on that one so we can get a little bit better understanding on that one. Yeah. Um, let's see, does the other navigation look like? So a question about the older uh, navigation look and feel, that, uh, that it would, is from version 11 and below. When you move to version 12, that, um, that uh, look and feel changes from the version 11. So you're not able to kind of like switch between classic and new. Uh, it is basically the, the, what you see now is what you're gonna move up to. That is correct, uh, right. Uh, right. Uh, what is the typical implementation like? Uh, do we, so that's something that we can talk uh, about, uh, talk about separately. Um, another question is how are images, uh, how are image assets uploaded into the application? I presume they are fixed assets. Are Maybe we talking about, no, are we talking about pictures? Or are we talking about documents? Or are we, what I are we talking pictures. Okay, just pictures. It's in a blog yeah. format, you know, so. Okay. Um, let's see here. Can we maintain the current version 11 look and feel? As I said before, uh, no, the version uh, 12 changes that you're not able to maintain the uh, look and feel version 11. Uh, for modifications done on, ver on B, not uh, just as on B, uh, Robert, you said for modifications done on B, if you could uh, uh, retype your question on that one. Um, Uh, can they upload locally? Um, uh, can they upload locally? And uh, Robert, I'm presuming you mean uh, basically um, have it just stored locally, or is it going in? You're wondering if it always goes into the main area. Yeah. So um, the images are done uh, go into the SQL Server. They're not done locally, correct? On that, Bob? Yeah, that is correct. That's right. Okay. But they're but right. they as I said, they are compressed. So therefore, it is not going to take take the amount of room that a typical image would would take up. It's it is a compressed image. So okay, all right. Um, let's see here. Uh, you answered that one. You answered that one. Um, oh, and when I upgrade the uh, stage uh, to version twelve. What about the other stage applications like SEI and so on? Uh, I would highly recommend when you do the upgrade to the new version uh, 12, or uh, that you will also upgrade the SEI and there's the other extended solutions so that they're all compatible uh, with that. In most cases, you would, it's required because they may not work with version 12 on their current versions. So we would upgrade them um, on that also at the same time. So it'd be across the board upgrade. Um, yeah, and I would, I would add to that that uh, SEI in particular, the 8.2 and the 8.3 versions have a lot, uh, a lot of great capability in them. So okay. Um, question is, can um, you show briefly the um, uh, enhancements on the scheduler? So uh, why don't we do a couple? Can you think that's something we can do in just a few minutes? Um, I. I do not have my scheduler working on this okay. particular image, so I'm sorry. I can, I can possibly record something and show it to you later. So right, if you okay. could do that and then send it to me, and I can then forward it on to, okay. the, to the group. Okay. Uh, let's see 
here. Uh, let's see here. This seems to be pretty much it. Um, so yeah, so for the more technical ones, I will take care of that in reference to the hardware requirements. At the moment when you, we send an email out, I will include that so everybody has that. Um, and I think that is it. I'll give it another 30 seconds to see if anyone else has a question. And we do not. So everyone, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Please remember to hopefully be able to join the webinar on the 17th uh, for um, the hosting, uh, the network hosting options or uh, private cloud options. And also be prepared, I uh, hope to see all of you at Sage Summit in Scottsdale, Arizona for our EM clients. Have a great day. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email me and I will go ahead and respond back to that. Thank you very much, Bob. I uh, appreciate your help here. And thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your time, everyone.